international comedy star David Strassman, who is going to have the audience in stitches tomorrow night at the, the Drum Theatre. He's got a brand new show called I, Teddy. It was a visit to Disneyland with his family that prompted a young David Strassman to ask his dad to purchase some professional magic trick gear for him. Then... I suppose the rest is history. He went on to junior high, he took some lessons in uh, ventriloquism, and he became what history has told us now, David Strassman, the puppeteer. David, nice to have you with us today on the program. Oh, it's great to talk to you again. What has it been, 15 years? Yeah, it's, it's been forever, hasn't it? And you've, yeah. been to, you've been back to Australia so many times since then. Yeah, well, it's my second home. You know, Melbourne was the first place I landed on your fatal shore, and... Uh, I haven't looked back since. That was in the 90s when I had hair. That, that, that's right. Well, that was when I interviewed you the first time uh, back in the 90s, and you brought uh, uh, your puppets into the studio. Hey, we... Can I get some chocolates? Teddy, I'm on the phone. Please. <laughs> Teddy. Guys, please. Yeah. You took my iPad. All right, Chuck, put, give him back the iPad, please. No way, dude. I'm on Tinder. This is crazy. <laughs> Chuck is on Tinder, which is Tinder for puppets, and uh, I can't get them off their screens. Uh, has he met anybody? Uh, what are you doing, Chuck? Swipe left, swipe left, swipe left. They're all pigs. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Miss Piggy. All right. Anyway, yeah, he's, he's looking at pig puppets or something like that. <laughs> just tell him to behave. You're, you're quite busy now. Uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, I've I'm, I'm just shut them up. But, yeah, it's great. I've got my brand-new show, I, Teddy, and yeah. I'm breaking all the laws of puppet physics. Uh, it is really my finest and most hilarious and craziest show yet. Now, David, things have developed for you over the years, of course, and uh, you've now become very uh, technologically involved in, in all the puppetry, haven't you? Yeah, this show is uh, a funny... I hold up a very silly mirror to our society. I mean, we're all addicted to our screens now. We're checking Facebook and Instagram, That's Snapchat, right. yeah. Twitter, and no one talks to anybody anymore, and... Uh, in my show, I uh, pretty much explore the, the real world of all of us with our faces deep into social media, and it's really, really lighthearted and funny. But in the show, I operate five puppets at the same time. That's huge. It is massive. I uh, throw my voice into five characters in a sustained 25-minute, six-way conversation. I don't know if you can picture that on the radio, but it is mind-blowing. David, how do you do it? Very well. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> I had to give you the um, line. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, I hold a handheld remote, yes. and each finger operates each of the puppet's mouths. So, wow. for example, my thumb is Chuck, my pinky finger is Teddy, and in a 25-minute hilarious discussion on what is real and what isn't, I operate them live and throw my voice to each mouth live as they're continually moving. It's mind-blowing. I reckon the audience would be totally confused with what you're doing up there. They'd be saying, how can he do that? Because we, we, we wouldn't see the remote control, are, would we? More, yeah, no, you, you do. I don't, I don't hide it at all. It's okay. in my hand. Right. Uh, I, I actually demonstrated it earlier in the show. Okay. But, uh, you know, the characters are so alive and so real. Am I alive? Yes, Teddy, you're alive. <laughs> uh, hello, Teddy. Chocolates in a minute. Uh, someone's saying hello to you. Doesn't he know I'm not real? Hello, Teddy. It's Lee here. Yeah, I think he, he just said that he's not real. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the show is really fun. It, it's, it's my finest yet, and I'm really fortunate. I'm a grown man who plays with dolls for a living. Well, you couldn't want for much more, could you? <laughs> it depends <laughs> what, what other jobs there are. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Do you remember those days at Disneyland when you asked your dad for that, uh, that, that kit of magic? Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, Disneyland was what really, I guess, solidified my desire to be part of the community that, that creates magic, whether it's magic or whether it's scenery or special effects or theater or lighting or music. Disneyland was the place that uh, really turned that on for me. And, uh, yeah, I asked my dad to get me some magic tricks, and instead of buying that cheap little plastic set you get at uh, the $2 shop, he, he spent some uh, effort. Uh, investigated and got me professional magic tricks, which took time and effort to learn. And uh, so I became more of a nerd as a 12-year-old. But, but that was the start for you. Then uh, in junior high, as I said in the intro, you, you went uh, and you took an elective, didn't you, to study how yeah. to... Yeah. I was very fortunate. In year eight, a uh, teacher offered a class in ventriloquism. I think the only time in human history mm. that ventriloquism was offered in a public school. And I took the class, excelled, and when he showed me how to advertise in the local papers to do kids' parties, that's when my 
interest really picked up because I started making money and free birthday cake. Uh, right. And, and your teacher in those days must have been a, a puppeteer himself. Uh, yeah, he was a very good ventriloquist. Uh, his name uh, was Stephen Hart. He ran the local children's television cartoon network on Channel 44. Remember back in the old days, there were like three or four major television stations, and there was a UHF channel. Do you remember those? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, he was on there, and uh, that's where it all started. In fact, I just looked at a, a photograph. I did my first television appearance in 1972. Right. What what luck or what joy that was to be able to sit in that class. If you'd have gone to a different school, perhaps your life might have turned out quite differently. That's right. I could be a radio presenter. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. And earning only about uh, one squillionth of a cent. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't earn that much, though. You've got some great lighting as part of this show. It's going to be a great production. Any yeah. chance of talking to Charlie there? You mean Chuck? Uh, oh, Chuck, oh, Chuck I, I mean. Is, is Chuck yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. Chuck, you want to say hello? No, you got my name wrong. Screw well, I, I thought I was thinking of your friend. I, I yeah. thought you might have met someone, a, a Charlie online, you see. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Come on, Chuck. What do you want to do? Come on, Chuck. I ain't talking to him. No way. I'm not talking to him. Chuck, oh, I want to ask you about Tinder. Hey, who the hell is on the phone? Hi, right, guys, please. I'm in the car on the way to the next gig. <laughs> Where's my... I can't find... Who's driving... <laughs> I thought Charlie was uh, Chuck's uh, twin character. Well, yeah, what I did was Chuck is uh, the puppet with hair I've had for many years. Yeah. And then the last show, Careful What You Wish For, uh, where I entered into alternate universes, Charlie was Chuck's doppelganger, his nemesis. Uh-huh. And considering it's 2018 and everybody has tattoos, I thought I'd keep the look of Chuck's tattooed head as being more relevant and uh, a sign of the times and just made him Chuck. A lot of fun. Who makes the puppets for you? Uh, I built Chuck, and uh, I have uh, oh a, a wonderful uh, customer and seamstress in Melbourne named Teddy Bear. I have special effects shops that uh, build my alien and all the robotic uh, bits that need to be machined. Uh, I do robotics myself, but I don't have the uh, tools to do the finer work. So uh, I farm it all out to the professionals that uh, that uh, make my show shine. David, we can't wait to see you down here uh, tomorrow night at the Drum Theatre. It's a great venue, and uh, we're looking forward. I'll be there tomorrow night to see you, by the way. So oh, brilliant. Uh, I, hope, I hope we can catch up after the show tomorrow night. That would be fantastic. Yeah, it would be lovely. Be my pleasure. And uh, hopefully I, I don't move my lips. <laughs> I, I've seen you before. I saw you at the Forum Theatre years ago, and I'm sure you don't move your lips. Oh, what a great venue that oh, was. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is uh, Chucky still there? Is he going to talk to me? Uh, Chuck, you want to talk to him? No, he's good. No, he doesn't want to talk. You don't want to talk. All right. I was going to ask him about Tinder and his girlfriends, but look, we'll leave him there. And we'll let him yeah, no play worries, with his iPad. No David, great to talk to you, pal. See you tomorrow night. I appreciate it. Bye, Lee. Okay, bye-bye to you.